Hello, my name is Carl Surrey and this is a video tutorial for two Facebook groups fans of Serif Software and the Affinity Designer and Photo group. This video is mainly aimed at beginners and those new to either Affinity Photo or Affinity Designer but it may be useful to some people who have had it for the programs for a little while. It is mainly looking at how you can alter the user interface and toolbars etc to suit your personal needs. I mean the way I want these programs to work may not be the same way that you want the programs to work. I'm going to do most of this in Affinity Photo um, but Affinity Designer is pretty much exactly the same as far as I can tell. So first things first let's have a look at this, the whole area here this is the user interface you are the user and you interface with this area so you can change mainly the color of this in the early versions of these programs you were stuck with this dark color you had a you could do a slight variation um, but there were some complaints about that and Serif have altered that and now we're up to versions uh, this is 1.6.1 something or other of both photo and designer Serif have added a way of getting a lighter user interface so if you come up to the edit menu and down to preferences or you can just press control and the comma and this is on the PC. On the Mac, I'm guessing it's um, command and comma. But it's easy to just go to the edit menu down to preferences. And which will open up this box. And one of the options is user interface. So you click on that and you get this option here. At the moment, it is set on dark. But if you click on light, it will change to the light grey user interface. You can tinker with the settings of how light or how dark it gets. I'm not going to alter it because it can take me a while to get back to where I want it to be. Now personally when this was launched I hated the dark background but I've got used to it now so I stick with the dark background. You do have some other options here which are, is not really about changing the way the program looks so I won't really be looking into this um, so I will just close this down so once you've changed the color of the user interface you can look at changing certain areas now the main areas is this these three boxes here which is called uh, studios you have this bar just underneath these menu headings that runs across the top of the screen which is the toolbar and down the left hand side of the screen you have the tools it's a bit confusing you've got a toolbar and tools bar um, now also in between the toolbar and the image area you have what is called the context bar I believe it's called and that will alter depending on the tool that you pick so which wherever tool you pick the context bar will alter now as this is going to be the easiest one to explain I will start with the context bar because as far as I know you cannot alter the look of the context bar depending on the tool you pick all you can do is hide it if you come up to view menu and come down to this here you've got show context toolbar you've got a little tick next to it but if you just click on it it will hide that context toolbar so then if you pick on a tool you will then have to probably get to the what you want via the menus or um, some other other way um, 
so there's no real reason to turn the contacts toolbar off so I'm going to put it back on again because you're going to need these tools now looking at the toolbar that runs along the top Serif have set it up by default with what they assume are going to be the ones that you want but you can sort of take some away or add some so again you can come to the view menu and then we have here you've got the show toolbar or so you can remove the toolbar if you want and we do that again why anybody would want to do that I don't know so let me bring this back and then come back to the view menu and but you've got customized toolbar which will bring up this box here where you've got a display of all the possible tools that you can put up here and you have these dotted squares uh, lined outlined squares which is where you can place some of these tools up into this toolbar most of them pretty much all of them are already up there um, but let's say for example um, where is this one here the align uh, range one nine times out of ten you're going to want a range or a line in the middle and a line in the center you may not want a line top left and right so you may just want to drag those two up into your toolbar let me just close that down so they are up there along with the arrange icon which will drop down the menu which would give you access to those same options anyway so let me just come back to this customize toolbar let me just no 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 I can just click and drag these down into the main area here and it will remove them from the toolbar up the top here so if there's any up here that you think you were never ever going to use you can just click and drag them down into the picture area um, not picture area I can't remember what this is area area is called sorry um, and it will remove it but you can always bring it back by the customize option found here so I'll close that so it's back to the way it was now for the tools down this side of the screen again you come into the view menu and you have again you got you can hide them which again I don't fully understand why anybody would want to but you can do if you want to but then you can come to customize tools now you will have here all the possible tools that you can have again most of them are pretty much there but not all of them you can also alter the number of columns at the moment there is one column now there is an advantage with having two columns at the very least you can have up to eight but if I put it on two and then I'll, I'll do close it has arranged all those icons in two columns but it has also added the color picker options which is found up here so if you are on say brushes for example you can use this area to pick the brush you want and then use this area to pick the color you want without having to sort of switch back and forwards like this to get the colors um, it's a minor advantage and you may have you might think you know the difference between clicking there and there or clicking here and then over there like I said it's a minor advantage but it is a slight difference that you may want to consider let me just go back to customize tools put this on to back to a one because there's not enough room in the one column version to have that black and white color option um, icon 
But say for example, because you've got a lot of the filter options here, say for example like um, Gaussian Blur. If you use Gaussian Blur a lot, you can just click and drag, add that to the menu, click close, and now Gaussian Blur is on the toolbar, or tools bar I should say. So if I click on that, it will now open up the Gaussian Blur option. Um, I don't particularly want it there. Let me just drag this out and away. So that has got rid of that. Now the one thing you may need to consider is each different persona, because obviously when you pick a different persona, you have different options. So you would again have to come to view customize tools. The only trouble here with these other personas, I think you pretty much have all the available tools here anyway. So let me just cancel that. Come to the develop. So I see yeah, you pretty much do have all of the available icons already in the tools bar it is only oh, I've just got to wait for this to tone map sorry it is only really the photo persona where you've got more icons here than you would want than what you get by default I should say so that is how you can customize the toolbar and the tools and the overall color of the user interface the last thing to look at is the studios these are by default set up into three sections and each has various tabs like this section has four tabs this one has five and this one has four and you can move between the different tabs within each section but you can add more if you come up to the view menu and down to studio a sub menu will come down the side here and all those that are ticked are the ones, the tabs that are already available in the various studios. Um, say for example if you wanted to look at text styles you could add text styles and this will open up, sometimes they will open up a tab in one of these studios and other times like this it will open it up as a floating tab but you can dock these to the other side of the screen it's not going to go you have to wait for the blue line to appear and when you do that it will dock that you can just click and drag it away to make it undocked but you could then dock it to this side of the screen or you can dock it within one of these tabs again you just got to wait for the blue line to appear so that textiles is now added as a new studio on this side but again I'm going to drag it out because I don't want that there and I'll just close that so that is how you can alter the studios to have the tabs that you want that you will use quite a lot so however you work you can set it up to suit yourself now one other thing is the tab key on the keyboard if you press the tab key you will lose pretty much all of the 
icons, studios, tools and what have you and you could do everything from the menus up here which gives you a clear and free um, picture to work on, area to work on. If you press the tab again all those will come back but if you do have let me um, do that one again which is the text styles if you do have one of these that are floating around and you press the tab button oh, in earlier versions I'm, I'm sure that when you press the tab button and then if any that were floating around were still visible this they're obviously no longer the case very sorry about that so that is the look on, on that on Affinity Photo and I'll just do a quick look at Designer same thing here view menu we have show the context bar customize the toolbar customize tools you've got the tab option to just have a, a very basic version of the user interface again you can change the user interface colors from the edit preferences option and you would need to change the different tools for the different personas like you did in Affinity Photo. So they both work in exactly the same way and you can customize it to your personal needs because nobody's going to work the same way so you may never you know like to know the history or the transform you could get rid of those and bring in different tabs to have in this particular studio area it's all down to personal taste I hope that has been of some help and I haven't rambled too much thank you for watching and goodbye